Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Use code MAYO at Underdog Fantasy right now to get a first-time deposit match of up to $100. A brand new, fresh edition coming at you right now. Gary and Thorne is on the line for the 48th installment of Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner, Cuss Corner. <laughs> That's usually when Tim pops in. Usually, but you know, you sort of threw it to Garyan, so I, I, I was going to let Garyan say something. I said that Garyan was here. Garyan is here. Usually, that's, that's the usually that's the cue for him or whomever to say something. But you, I very hello. Clearly, I very clearly went into the cuss corner throw. You know the do 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 cuss corner. It's and then you say that's not what it's called. Like what are we doing here? Well, we have done forty seven of them. Well, but you know we we have, but we haven't. Right, like. How many of them are compilation clip show style corners? Six. Like six of them. Like several of them. Six of them. And to, and we don't do these standalone ones very often anymore. So sorry if I'm not used to it. All right. Have, have you guys gone back and listened to some of the old ones? I know a couple don't, a couple don't fans have to. are doing uh doing re listens. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't have to. I'm just reading the recaps. Yeah, like, but I stand I stand by what I said. He I, he doesn't hit everything though. There there are moments in there where you're like, wow. Wow, we spent 10 minutes talking about that. Amazing. That is a uh, shout out Cody, who's gone back and is doing the complete realist. And he's only gotten sick three times since starting Cuss Corner. I wouldn't recommend it. Well, what do you recommend as the... Fr- you know what? I have a topic to start things off for you, Tim. I want to give you credit. I know how much you love credit. Um, I, I do credit for all kinds of things. What's this credit for? This credit is about the Apple Watch. Uh, I got one right before Christmas time, and I must say my fitness levels have gone through the roof. Now, my watch doesn't bully me like it bullies you into doing things, but having the rings there and setting them high gives me a nice goal to work through every day if I want to close my rings. It's like a video game on my wrist in order to get my exercise in. I actually quite love it, and it's working. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, God forbid, you know, the thing that's attached to your wrist that actually can read your biometrics is better than an app on your phone that's guessing, which is what you were doing before. It was. Yeah, it's a great it's a great invention. True. And like I said, it, it works like video game style where I can see, oh, I'm getting close. Yeah, I can probably do another five minutes on the treadmill, Garion. No, I'm I'm fully in this camp of being an absolute child when it comes to exercise. Um you know, I, I will not run outside, although I guess now I could because you have these Apple watches and things like that. But I need I know myself. I need to go to a gym and have the pretty little numbers and colorful lights and buttons tell me that I'm doing well and doing good and hitting benchmarks. Um, you know, even if it is your phone, like, you know, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000, whatever your phone is telling you to do every day. I don't know. I don't want to let that little guy down, that little graphic guy. Uh, and I like the little fireworks when I get it done. So yeah, it, it all works. Yeah, but I'm just saying it, re- it worked really well. It's working really well. I don't want to say the long term because we're not in the future yet, Tim. But so far, so good. So thank you. You're very welcome. Although I did not purchase him the watch, so the thank you can only go so far. No, but, but I will accept. I will accept it for being you know sort of ahead of the curve on this one. Yeah, you were the inspiration to get it. I saw that you were getting in better shape. I was like, man, I wonder if I got this. How much better shape I could get into? And just great results so far. Yeah, it is all about the fireworks and the rings and the streaks. And yeah, you don't you don't want to let your 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 watch down. It works hard for you. You you want to work hard for it. Yeah, I'm on a 94-day exercise streak, so we're doing good here. That's an even better streak than my current Wordle streak. Your current what streak? My <laughs> well, I, I, I play still. I'm one of these people. I don't post my score, but I still play Wordle every day. Oh, of course you do. And That well, was not- a real like rural juror situation for me where I had no idea what you said. Uh, Sorry but yeah, about Wordle. that. Okay. Yeah, I still play all those New York Times games. I just don't post about them. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gary, and turn your mic down just a little bit because you're coming in a bit hot now and like a uh, modulated just a little bit. So, but Tim, you can hit us with the first topic. What are we doing? All right. So the first thing I want to talk about, uh, I'm not going to name any names because that's not important, but 
someone we know when we were in a group thread wrote recently something that really got under my skin and bothered me quite a bit. Um, and it was about traveling. And the person made this point, and it's completely ludicrous, which is that they couldn't understand why anybody would ever want to travel to the same place twice. That was me. And I said you're, this. You're, I wasn't going to name names. I was going to leave it nameless. <laughs> but if you wanted yourself for it, fine. P. Mayo. No, no, no. Patrick Ham. Patrick, Patrick Ham. <laughs> yeah. Like made this absolutely ludicrous. And the more I thought about it, just bananas I argument that you should never go back to the same place twice that you visit on a vacation, that you should always go to new places all the time. And uh, if you went back to the same place, you need to go to a completely different resort or a completely different part of the city. And the more I thought about that, I was like, that makes zero sense whatsoever. The whole purpose of vacations, you know, is about, you know, getting away from the daily grind and going to something that, you know, relaxes you and brings you enjoyment, comfort, uh, fond memories. And there are certainly times when going somewhere new is a great idea, and, and, and I support that. But there are also lots of reasons why you go to a favorite resort or hotel or somewhere you went with your family that you loved or go to a, a place that you've been before that was great. And that causes that vacation to be you know memorable and continues to instantiate the memories you have about that place because the service is really good or there, there's something about the place that, that is special in your heart. Pat's position, which is completely Spartan, is to say, no, you should always be moving somewhere different. You should never experience the same thing twice and uh, sentimentality should be thrown out the window. And that just really bothered me. I just think that's a completely foolish way to look at travel. And I think it's wrong. Well, you're bad at traveling to begin with, and you're scared of anything that's new, so I'm not shocked that you hold this position. My position, Gary, is that travel is for exploration, that mm -hmm. why would you ever want to go halfway around the world to do the same thing that you've already done? I like going out and trying new things, trying new restaurants. It'd be like, okay, so I just went to Panama City and I went to Aruba, and I the way that I structured the trip, my wife and I went to Panama City and we stayed there for two days. Then we traveled to Aruba for six days and we came back to Panama City for another two days. And I stayed, we stayed in one part of Panama City the first time and like the old part. And we came back, we went to a completely different side of the city because I'd already seen that part of the city. You know, like I wasn't going to get up to the other part. This is a way to put me there so I can go experience that. Like if I ever went back to Aruba, the place I stayed at was fine. But I have nothing to compare it to at the same time. Like, I don't know if it was the best. I don't know if it was the worst. Maybe the place right next door is actually a lot better than the place that I was just at. But how would I ever know if I just constantly went back to the same thing over and over? It's a cycle of mediocrity. No, and I think, um, unsurprisingly, um, I think you've both taken the stance that I would assume you'd take on this matter. Um, <laughs> And look, I, I think each case is justified in a specific kind of way. I, I think in general, I probably lean more towards your line of thinking, Pat. However, if truly all you want out of a vacation is a sense of relaxation, uh, which generally comes from a sense of comfort and familiarity, um, I could see it. Like if you're someone who goes to a foreign country specifically to stay at a resort, lounge by a pool, you like the staff, you like the hotel rooms. I could see the value in going back to a resort over and over and over again. I have family members who do that. However, if you're someone who's looking to actually go out and experience things, experience events, obviously going different places would be ideal. Obviously, sometimes these situations and these lines kind of get blurred and people can get I wouldn't say screwed. However, I will say that when I went to Italy with my then girlfriend, now fiance and her parents, um, they had already been to Italy a couple times and they had been to Rome and they didn't want to go back. How is, whereas I had never been to Rome, really, really wanted to go, didn't get to because they didn't want to go back. But I understood it. I get it. You want to try new things. But yeah, Tim, I, I, I feel like you're probably more of a let's just read a book by the pool or on the beach and if that's really what you want to do and you like doing it at a place you know is going to be adequate or, or good or great, I think that's perfectly validated. I don't have a problem with people vacationing for adventure and new experiences. I think there's definitely a time and a place for that. But that's not the only reason that you should be going on a vacation. That's not the only reason to travel and to presume that it ought to be or that's what people should be doing is, is just so 
it's so extremist. It's, it's it, so hold on. out to you, lunch. You, you spend all, you save all this money to go on a very expensive vacation. And basically what you want to do is exactly the same thing that you do at home. You could have just stayed at home and saved all the money. Sometimes you want to adventure and that's great. And sometimes you're looking for something else because vacations can be all kinds and traveling can be all kinds of different things. And there's a time for each sort of thing, depending on the type of vacation that you're going to take. Uh, if what you're interested in that time is that adventure, then going to somewhere new is, diff is perfectly fine. But also there are times when you want to go on vacation and you want to, you know, experience and enjoy something that you've already experienced and enjoyed because it was a pleasurable experience and there's no harm in wanting it uh, again. It's just, there's, it was just this weird and I don't think very well thought through extremism. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I'm not the guy who's the fucking afraid to leave my fucking condo building. All right. You're Mr. What? Sex, I leave. What are you? Sex with the lights off too? Like, give me a fucking break here. You can stay at home and do exactly what you fucking just said. If you want to go travel, go travel and go do things. Like you're the same, you're the type of person who would spend like $5,000 to go to the Caribbean and stay in your fucking hotel room the entire time. And I don't look down on that. I do. I Although, think that's fucking stupid. It, it's absolutely see, I'm moronic. not here to. I'm not here to judge people. I am here to judge. I am here vacation. to judge it. I think it's stupid and it's a waste of fucking money. We well, have okay. to remember that every time Tim goes to a food court, he's essentially traveling the world. So <laughs> he's already seen all these places. He's experienced these experiences. You know, Italy, China, Japan. It's all been done. I like new stuff, but I also have places that are very fond to me that I like to return to. And I think that both are perfectly legitimate and reasonable ways to spend your vacation. And the idea that unless you're hopscotching all over the globe to new places you've never been before for the sake of never having been there before, um, I, I just find that to be just mind-numbingly crazy and well, i can't support it well g give me an example of a place that you go to over and over because it's comfortable for you on vacation there is a resort town not too too far from here like a three or four hour drive that's not a real vacation that, that is absolutely not what i'm talking about well that's a vacation no who it's are, not that's who, not a fucking vacation you who I'm, I'm you telling you, of all things, I'm that telling you, you that when you go and travel, that's not going to travel. That's hopping in your car and spending three hours in it to go to a hotel that's kind of by that's you. That's traveling. No, it's not. That's, that's not traveling. traveling. Again, who made you? I am. I, the as the arbiter of the show named after me, I am the Well, actually, this show wasn't me. even named after you. Well, this is the Pat Mayo Experience presented by Underdog Fantasy. Code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy will get you a first-time deposit match <laughs> of up to $100. And if you support Cuss Corner and the Pat Mayo Experience, I highly suggest that you go use that code because it means that we can do more of these Cuss Corners. And if you don't go do it, then it means fewer Cuss Corners. So... If you want to have more Cuss Corners, I would suggest going to deposit on Underdog using code MAYO right now. Go deposit 10 bucks. Why not? You double your money up right away. The best bet you can make. Anyway, travel. I'm talking about don't like, make getting Gar out. Don't make Garyan a sad Garyan. I'm not trying to make Garyan a sad Garyan. I think Garyan completely sees what I'm trying no, to say. No, by having fewer corners. I was trying to say by having fewer corners. Well, then, people don't then support Garyan should then go. They'll, then they'll make Garyan a sad Garyan because he won't be on the show as often because we won't have as many corners. I mean, Garyan's barely on the show as it is these days. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm only about 15% of corners now anyway. True. So anyway, Garyan, so you as per normal are probably the level-headed one in this and fall somewhere in the middle. I just don't like, I, it hadn't occurred to me that someone would consider a three hour drive of vacation. No, like, that's, that seems crazy. Um, yeah, I think, cause in terms of what you're saying, there's nowhere you could drive where you probably haven't experienced something at least similar to that particular version of culture. Just getting out of the house and getting out of the city that you're in is in and of itself, if you're gone for any reasonable period of time, a vacation. Well, when was the last time you left the country, Tim? I left the country briefly for a few hours oh, uh, for uh, on my last little trip. Uh, but before that, I hadn't left the country since the Super Bowl. In 2000. But, you know, we had, a, we had but we had a two and a half year period where, you know, you couldn't. So, when was the last time you left North America? Uh, it's been almost 10 years. Okay. I'm th I feel like you might be sort of selling yourself short here. I feel like you've limited your experiences. Well, okay, but look, at the same time, no one is going to see everything in the world. 
Uh, no. no, not only is not, not only going to see everything. The amount of things you're going to see in life is basically the same as seeing nothing because there is a hundred million billion things and places to go and see and do. And what you will experience throughout your lifetime, even if it's a hundred years long and you go on a vacation every year, will barely be scratching the surface of what there is to travel. Do so you not I, have places though? You're like you're desperately dying to go to. Like I'd love to go I'd to love like to Germany. Go. I'd love to go to sure. Ireland. Sure, there are places I'd like to go. Absolutely. Um, and, and places I do intend in my life to visit, but like, I'm not going to make it out to be like that. My whole life needs to revolve around the excitement of a trip to this new place that like, if instead of going there, I went to somewhere else, you know, halfway across this continent that I've been to before, that'd be okay. As long as I you don't want to see what the McDonald's in Madrid is like. Yes, I do. It would be one of the first things that I would do there, but that doesn't mean that like, I have to do that on my vacation. It doesn't mean like if I went to somewhere I'd been before, like halfway across the country, that's fine too. If it makes me happy, if the time is well spent and I'm enjoying it and happy, then that's a good vacation. I'm not here looking down my nose, judging people on what makes them uh, happy on their vacation. Pat, Pat is. I think mean, that's a very unfortunate position for him to take. I mean, I feel the same way about people who go to fucking all ex all inclusive resorts. Like, I I don't get it. You travel to this other country to stay in one place the entire time and not see any of this country at all. Well, they're going there to experience what the all inclusive resort has. They're not interested in, by and large. I, the few times I've been to an all inclusive, I certainly wasn't interested in leaving the resort. Uh, I was perfectly happy just being there and walking on the beach and eating the food that they had there and drinking the stuff that they had there and hanging out in my room and watching local television. That made me happy. I'm not saying it has to make other people happy. If other people need to go on 15 different excursions, God bless you. Go do those things. But that doesn't make your vacation any better than mine or mine any better than yours. No, mine was way, my vacations are way better than yours. You have the travel tips of a fucking agoraphobic. I'm not an agoraphobic. I do leave the house. I left the house. I leave the house most days a week. Like I'm not. <laughs> that's good. That, that's, a, that's a real <laughs> step like in the right direction, there, pal. <laughs> like, I, that, 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 that's. You, I think you've lost this argument. I think if people were asking, uh, people, according to you, Garyan agreed with me. What are you talking well, no, about? Did, I mean, look, did I, he or didn't he? I'm not so sure he did. No, either. again, did he, I I can see the value of your of your point, Tim. Like I I do you. have days when I'm like. You know, I, I I like to relax on this day of vacation. Um, you know, it, some days I don't want to like climb a mountain to go see a waterfall. I'd rather just be by the pool. Um, the first time I went to an all-inclusive resort, I'll admit I was pretty mesmerized by the concept of an all-inclusive resort. Mm. I'd never been to one before. I wanted to see what that was all about. Uh, it also happened to overlap with like the first Thursday and Friday of March Madness. So I got to watch a lot of March Madness in Spanish. That was fun. Um, but I, I do think after I remember the first time I went to an all inclusive, we were there for seven days and we had a couple excursions. But by day five or six, I was so bored, so incredibly bored. And that's why I would never go to another all-inclusive for more than like three or four days. Like, I just think you're limited to what you can do in a place like that. And to Pat's point, you want to broaden your horizons. You want to go see things. You want to go explore. I had so much fun in Scotland because we we had family there and they got to show us around. And we got to go do things like I do think that's a more rewarding, more enriching experience in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And I when, I, and when, I, when I'm talking and when I'm talking about like going out and doing things, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go to a you know, get a dune buggy and go across some sort of like wasteland or desert or climb a mountain or go on some huge sort of hike. I mean, the, the problem with all inclusives is, is what Gary just pointed out. You get stuck at one place the entire time. Now you're staying somewhere. You can do that uh, at the hotel for part of the day. But. When you're when you have the all inclusive tag, as Tim, you would know, you're trying to you're trying to beat the house the entire time. Get as much mm -hmm. drink into you, get as much food into you. So many then, buffets. But the thing is, then you don't yes. get to experience, especially if you go to like somewhere like really nice, like some of the restaurants, the local restaurants around. Especially if you go to a place where you can just kind of walk around everywhere. Like that's a part of the experience too. Just go out and see what the country has to offer in terms of food, in terms of drink, in terms of culture, where if you're at an all-inclusive, you will be within the gates of that place for seven straight days. You know what? This annoyed me, too. You brought this up on the same thread, and I had people come to my defense on this one, was the idea that unless you're 
you know, going to restaurants that are incredibly high end and just eating whatever they bring to you without any consideration that you're not dining in any respectable way. I mean, that that, that, me that, that that is also not what I said. <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, well, why don't you give an accurate and fair de depiction of what you said? Because I did not agree with it and I wasn't the only one. Yeah, because you went with our steroid fucking freak friend who also I like, can't eat 80 different things because it might throw his testosterone level at a whack. So like, let's not be on that guy's side. Let's be on the side of people with some culture on them. So Gary, and here's what it is. Uh, I went to a place the first night uh, we were in Aruba and it was like a dining experience. There's only 16 seats in it. We had to book it like five months in advance in order to go. And what it was was a five and a half course meal. You didn't know it. it's a brand new menu every single day. It's whatever the chef ends up cooking. They bring you the five and a half meals. There's a wine pairing that can go with it if you're into that kind of thing but it's more of an experience and like a, a very high-end meal kind of thing you get to share it with everyone else you get to meet the people that you go with like it's an event like you can go to the most expensive steakhouse and get a really nice steak but i mean how much better is that steak going to be than the one that's half the price you pay a thousand dollars for a steak or 500 bucks for a steak or 250 bucks for a steak down to 100 bucks for a steak down to 50 bucks for a steak there's only so many different levels that can bring you truth to. The real dining experience is actually doing something that's a little bit different than anything else. And I thought that was really awesome to do. And like, I don't have the greatest palate in the world. I don't love everything. But when I'm in a situation like that, I just think it's really exciting to go do something like that. So they were just scared because they don't like to eat things. So they just couldn't wrap their minds around, well, I don't know what they're going to bring me. And then Tim had like anxiety about it for me. Well, yeah, they he wasn't serve, even fucking yeah. there. They could serve me stuff I don't like. Then don't eat it! like Indiana Jones visions here? Like, also, can I... What do you think they're going to bring you? I, I, can I ask the, the question that I'm sure many people are wondering? What is a half course? A half course was... It was just like a like a very small dish. Uh, like an... Uh, what do you call it? An app? Aprite or whatever it is. Like, like, a, like a sorbet palate cleanser sort of thing? Yeah, it was a palate cleanser is exactly how to put it. It was in between like the second and third course. Okay. Fair enough. Well, that's the first thing I was wondering. What in the name of heaven is that? But like, no, I'm not comfortable with just being served whatever at this experience. It could be something that I really don't like. And like, I'm not comfortable with that. Like, I then like don't to eat me, it. Don't, if it's supposed to be a pleasurable experience, I would be riddled with anxiety wondering, goodness knows what is coming out of the kitchen next. And am I going to want to eat it? Where did it come from? What is what, what's in there? I, I just don't want. I'm I'm sorry. I understand that getting a couple of JBCs is not considered high class eating. I, I appreciate that, but I know what I'm getting and that makes me happy. So well, look, I can, I can be a picky eater too. And I would almost say that's, that's in almost an ideal situation where as opposed to like picking up a menu and going like, Oh, I don't know if I like any of this stuff and, and, and going over it with a fine tooth comb and trying to figure out all the ingredients, like just having them drop down something in front of you, you have no idea what it is. I mean, that's almost a, a better way to eat if you are someone who's a little bit picky because it's just like, all right, it's here. I don't know anything about it. The only way to know is to taste it and I'll probably like it. And this I, is, I and this is exactly, and hold on, this is exactly how I felt about it because there are certain things, like my wife will basically eat anything uh, and like she's just gung-ho to go do this sort of thing. So since I've been doing these experiences with her, like I found that I actually like a, a lot more things than I thought that I liked because it, it's put down in front of you, you try it, you're just like, all right, if I don't like it, you do have the option, Tim, not to eat it anymore. Um, if it's something that you don't like, you, they're not like jamming it down your throat like you're- No, but if I'm spending the kind of money, the house, though, spending the kind of money that you're spending on a meal like this, you better believe I better eat, I need to eat every single thing that's on that plate. Cause like I'm spending well, an arm and it's a not, It's not like the plates are big, they're like this big. No, I know all the more reason that I need to make sure I'm eating everything that's on there because I'm goodness knows like it would put Jeff's seven thousand dollar Thanksgiving plate <laughs> meal to shame probably right like I just I, I honestly would feel extraordinarily guilty if I didn't eat everything that was served to me at this place and just it wouldn't be a relaxing and enjoyable dining experience for me. It would be a tremendously n worrisome. Well, I, well, Maybe, well and no, I'm not as venture. I'm not as venturesome as some people when it comes to eating. I'm some not, I'm some people. I mean, just think about what you've said so far and what you've brought up. You're not adventurous when it comes to eating. You're not adventurous when it comes to travel. You leave your house once every three days. Maybe this is more of a you thing than a collective experience here. What I am saying is, is that you're that afraid I, of everything. I'm not afraid of everything. I just 
There are certain things that I don't want to do on my vacation that will cause me needless amounts of stress. I don't get where the stress comes into this, though. I guess I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to serve me. And I mean, I, I like it or I might just or I might really, really not like it. And it's just that would bother me. I'm like, who knows what's coming next? I will say I, I do have a thing and, and maybe Tim's sort of speaking to this a little bit. Um, and I know it's silly, but, you know, I was the kid in school when the teacher would ask a question and no one would raise their hand. I get to start I get a little sweaty. I was like, someone's got to answer this person's question. Like, I, I feel like they're just sitting there. They're dying. Um, and, and I like, I'll go to a store sometimes. And if a, a clerk helps me suddenly, I feel like 80% more, uh, responsible for buying something at that store. Even if I didn't plan on doing it when I walked in, like, I don't like wasting people's time. So I could see a scenario where if you got something and you didn't like it and you didn't eat it, um, you know, having the waiter come over and have to take it from you and, and give the like, Oh, so you didn't oh, like the it. Shame, like, ah. The tremendous shame that I would feel. Like, I feel like it's both, probably both, affecting you more than me, but I do get that a little bit. Both of you need therapy. Yeah. I feel the exact same way as Gary and by the way, like I would feel far more like almost socially obligated to buy the thing that the, that the clerk may have helped me with simply because they spent their time to help me. That's uh, and if the that's like, job. I know, I know, I know, but like at the same time, I would feel an obligation. Uh, and unless I really, really, really didn't want the thing or it didn't fit or like whatever, I probably would buy it. Good well, being being God. poor helps a lot with some of these problems. Well, I'm that's also true. If you can't afford it, like whatever, you can't afford it. Like that, that's fine. But like if I'm in the store and I'm looking at something, and anyway, it would be the same way with the food. I would feel tremendous amounts of shame and judgment of the 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 the, the, the server picking up the plate of you know, mutton with something or other, you know, with some sort of micro, with some sort of micro green that I didn't like the texture or taste of taking it away and just thinking rube while they pick up my plate. I, I would feel very judged. Well, it seems like no matter what you do, you feel judged. You're just in your own head about this sort of thing. It may be the best way to do it. It's like, look, I want parasailing on this trip. I'm not the biggest fan of heights in the world. That sounds fun. I would have done that, by the way. Listen, I, mean, I didn't want to do it. I would have tried it. You, really? So out of everything sounds like a real situation. situation. I would have tried it. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I would have tried it. It's perfectly safe. Like, they have secure wires and everything. Like, it's okay. not like I'm bungee jumping without a bungee cord or something silly. Or... So you would go bungee jumping, too? You'd jump out of a plane? I would be less. I, I, I'd have to work myself up to that. Put it so, that way. So we got, but paras pa pa paragliding. Yeah, I, I would be up for that. I'd try it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Gary. And uh, my wife wanted to do it. I did not want to do it. Uh, but mm -hmm. she was bullied. Like you needed like a, a certain amount of weight on it in order for to be able to go. I think it was like 160 pounds or something like that. So she couldn't do it by herself. Right. Nice brag for me, a skinny wife here. But uh, I was like, listen, I know. Like, and she was like really gung-ho to do it. I was like, all right, I'll do it with you. But I was just like, and we got up there. And like going up was like really fun. Then we're up there and it was like kind of windy. So we started going like up and down. And I was just holding on. She's like, oh, look at that. I just looked, looked at her. I was like, just don't just pretend like I'm not here. I'm going to stare straight, kind of look down a bit to see like some stingrays and just like make sure I don't throw up. Cause like, it's, you know, like when you go to the top of the roller coaster and you start going down and you get the queasy feeling. Yes. It was like that, but for 10 straight minutes, like it didn't really stop. Oh yeah. yeah. Just, just, uh, you got locked onto like a, a tilt a whirl or something for five minutes and it just never seemingly never ends. I know that one. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm glad that I did it. Would I do it again? Yeah. No, unless I was like forced to do it, but I am glad that I now have had that experience. Now I know I don't really like it all that much. I was correct knowing that I wasn't going to like it, but at least I went oh, we, through we, it. What, what's that? Yeah. I was just saying say we had a, um, I think we were in Bahamas and we went on like an excursion where we, uh, went up to the top of this like waterfall or something. And then you almost like use the waterfall and the caverns as like slides to work your way back down. And it was, it was pretty fun, but you got to this point where there was like a 40 foot jump you could do if you wanted to do that. And there were stairs you could take if you didn't want to do it. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm here, let's jump. And I remember I, I jumped in, I over rotated and just, went belly first into this jump and I could hear the clap of the water, even as I was underneath it. 
And I think the next day I had the, the entirety of my body was black and blue, but I'm glad I did it. Like it's, it's still an experience. It's still something you did and you can talk about it. So yeah, I mean, even if you're a little afraid of these things, it is, it does end up being worth it more times than not. Yeah. And throwing yourself outside of your comfort zone is the only way to really grow as a human being, Tim. It's certainly one way in which a person grows is, T.S. Eliot said, if you don't go in over your head, you'll never know how deep you can go. Why don't you listen more to your friend talking shit Eliot over here? <laughs> just, uh, you know, I, I just said there were some instances where these sorts of adventures I, I'm fine with, but not all of them. And something like a, a restaurant, a meal that I would be really looking forward to all day. I feel like, I don't know, I just, it would like feel like it would be, a, it would, the experience would be a very unpleasant for me. I'd be looking forward to it being over. Well, but you can also just go to a normal restaurant in some of these places, like, and and find something you oh, like. Yeah, that's that's what I would that's what I would prefer to do. So you can, going somewhere nice is fine, but like, I need to have control over the stuff. At the same time, when I said normal restaurant, I still mean like a sit down restaurant with. Oh, like yeah, no, so do I. That's fine. Local that's fine. fare, okay. Yeah, t t Tim's yeah, like, I went to fine. Mexico and uh, I'm going to Taco Bell. Like this, this is authentic <laughs> Mexican right now. Paul actually wanted to chime in here. You want to break up our uh, privilege vacation chat here, Paul? It's kind of like a, along the lines of when Tim was talking about getting like a JBC while he's on vacation. Is this all because that you're too afraid to call and make a reservation? Mm. No, but I imagine if you're in a country where English isn't the first language, you really can't call and make a reservation. You can. Well, it's all online. I would presume it must be done through the internet somehow, yeah. Through the internet somehow would be your yes. take on that? I presume that's how that is, that is done, yes. Yeah. Maybe if you're in a nice enough hotel, your concierge would do it for you. But but you don't stay in those places? No, I don't, usually. But, you know, I don't know. In some countries, maybe the hotels that I would stay in would constitute nice enough. Also, how is talking to a concierge different than talking to a hostess? That's a great question, and I don't know that I know the answer to that <laughs> other than it just would not be as stressful I think so you never actually got a concierge to book you anything you just like the idea of it and you're pro yes yes exactly I think that's already established see I know the, the way that you make it out like you're staying at these hotels all the time that have a concierge and the concierge does everything for you but no everybody knows that I'm not staying at these places I, I like to I don't think that everyone knows that Gary did you know that no, I, I also feel like the level of hotel you're talking about, like I'm I'm not a rich person. Um, you know, most three star hotels have a concierge or something equating to that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a three star hotel should have a concierge that should make your uh, reservations for you. That's true. I mean, it depends on what three star hotel you're going to here. I really think that depends on where you're at. Maybe. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right. So that was a fun one. You got another one? Yeah, I got other ones. Um, I've been battered around the last couple of weeks on Twitter um, about two separate things. And I just want to put it out there that all you people seem to who are against me have lost it. Uh, there is this groundswell of people who seem to think that grilled cheese sandwiches are better than cold cheese sandwiches. And I'm here to tell you, you people don't know what you're talking about. And I took incredible amounts of flack for what I think is an expertly curated chicken wing flavor list uh, from people who I, I don't know where their sense of taste comes from. So I, I'm happy to, to, to deal with both or one or the other. What's your pleasure? Let's start with the grilled cheese versus cold cheese sandwich. Okay. <laughs> uh, you ran a poll, Most, on, you ran a poll yeah. on this. You couldn't even claim victory for a five percenter on this one. It was sub three percent of people agreeing with you. Yeah, I, I, I almost wonder if I was being trolled uh, because this, it doesn't seem possible that people would vote this way. Ninety-five percent of grilled cheese sandwiches are done poorly because you bad. make them. No, like as, as you, we have you're, already you're, established you're, uh, on the previous on. show, I use olive oil, not butter, because it tastes better. So most grilled cheese sandwiches are made with butter. Uh, it, they. So they're greasier. They happen to most of the time not be perfectly evenly cooked on both sides. Oh, 3.8%. So the, the, the evenness factor is off. They're often burned somewhat on one side and less burned on the other. 
Uh, you know, just they, they don't use enough cheese. People don't use enough cheese most of the time. Most grilled don't cheese a lot of these problems persist with a cold cheese sandwich. No, like you could use not enough cheese on a cold cheese well, sandwich you, too. You could, but it's easier to re regulate it. So, so uh, Gary, Gary, and what what he got, what he brought up here. So either he is making his own grilled cheese sandwich, and the other example that he gave us in the chat that we were having is that they don't do it good at Tim Hortons. Well, they really don't. Why are you fucking? Yeah, buying the a reason they don't do Hortons? it well is that they end up serving it to you and the cheese isn't properly melted and the bread is still cold. They're basically giving you a cold cheese sandwich, which is the worst version of a grilled cheese sandwich, which is why you're disappointed. No, it's lukewarm is the problem half the time. And as people know, like I prefer unmelted cheese on my burger to melted cheese. Like I prefer cheese that you're going to eat to not be melted by and large. And so like a cold cheese sandwich is more consistent that the each bite is far more consistent in its texture uh it never burns the roof of my mouth the way the grilled cheese sandwiches often burn the inside of my mouth uh what, what are you four just, years old uh, just you know you want to eat it while it's still hot but then like you bite into you bite into it and it bur burns the inside of your mouth so no grilled cheese sandwiches by and large are overly greasy unevenly cooked uh, and just not good, whereas a cold cheese sandwich is far more consistent and usually quite delicious. I guess all you people who would like to go to Augusta National would never touch a pimento cheese sandwich, the it, most iconic. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's hold on, there. no, hold on. It's funny that you brought that up because the people that generally replied to you about that talked about how terrible it is. And yet it's like the most iconic. And well, it's funny that the people who have Augusta had National. it, it's funny that people are having it and telling you one thing and you who hasn't had it thinks it's something different. And they keep putting it out year on year. Sure, and people keep it's a tradition. It year that, on year. It's a tradition to go get, but everyone just kind of says, "Like, hey, you have it once. It's like kind of gross, and you don't get it again." Paul, but, but again, the thing—it's like the, the McRib all over like, again. It is like the McRib. You're right. People get it because yeah. they're like, "Oh, I've heard all about it," and then they're let down. It's exactly like you having the McRib. Maybe, but I've never had it before, so I don't know. I I think the the main thing here is. There's no problem with cold cheese. Like, cold cheese is a main element of charcuterie. Like, good mm -hmm. cheese is fine cold. However, you're talking about a piece of, two pieces of Wonder Bread and a craft single, maybe two. Not necessarily. The reason that we put that on a pan with some butter and heat it up and brown the bread and melt the cheese is when you're working with the absolute bare minimum ingredients, you have to do something to change them up a little bit to make them edible. Like, I just, I couldn't, like, craft craft singles barely melt as it is. Like, I, I just couldn't see myself eating one of those without at least, like, heating it up and melting it. Like, that at well, least I'm makes it huge, somewhat edible. I'm not a huge fan of the cold craft cheese sandwich either. I'm thinking more like the sliced Swiss uh, cheese, for example. Like, that, to me, is a much better sandwich. Uh, can, can you explain yeah, like, to people um, your homemade queso before we move on here? Oh, Yeah, I just sprayed Pam into a pan and then just melted a bunch of craft Singles. So you don't add like any Never. spices? Not that time I didn't. Oh god. It's still better than my first attempt, which was heating up some cheese whiz in the microwave. <laughs> oh, what color did it turn? Uh, you know, it's not a natural one. Oh god. Uh, and it wasn't that great. Like my homemade queso wasn't that great. It wasn't uh, it wasn't it that great, so it was just slightly great, is what you're saying? I didn't I, I never I never really made it again. Did you finish it? Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna waste it, Gary. I'm like it wasn't inedible. I mean, you already but wasted like, you already wasted your dignity by starting it. But you know, that's just my point is that I probably would enjoy that better than 95 percent of grilled cheese sandwiches. I will concede that there are sometimes some places, no doubt, where it could be done perfectly and it's a knockout. I won't dispute that, but it's done so poorly so often. Uh, it's often so uneven and uh, the, the melting isn't even done right that I just think you need to steer clear of the whole thing. So outside of your house and Tim Hortons, where else have you had grilled cheese sandwiches? I've had them in PEI. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, there's a place that is like a anyway whatever they 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 do like milk products and such so that was pretty decent there uh, i've had grilled cheeses at home i've had grilled cheese sandwiches I don't know. I can't think off the top Never, of my head. Nowhere is the answer. So you got them in Tim Hortons or you've made them yourselves and you're a terrible fucking cook. And this is leading to your opinion on things. But I actually don't think I'm that bad of a cook, I have to say, in my own defense. I'm actually a pretty reasonably decent You cook. just told us you put a thing of cheese whiz in the microwave and then ate it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that I'm always a good cook. But when I set my mind to something, I can make some really nice stuff. I just don't understand how you can't make a decent grilled cheese sandwich. It's like because it's, it's really difficult. That's why, Gary. We learn how to do it when we're like nine. It's like the first thing my mom was like, all right, you're coming home from school in like fourth grade. I trust you to get like a pan and use a burner. Here's two slices of bread and some cheese. Well, I wasn't trusted to use a pan and a burner because, as you know, I flipped the pan upside down, buttered the bottom <laughs> of the pan and put it on the stove. So I'm at a disadvantage. Oh, God. Well, you know, those are facts. Uh, so, yeah, because grilled cheese sandwich, I, I don't like when, like, one side of it is significantly more cooked than the other. That bothers me. I want it to be perfectly even if possible. Like, so, do you make pancakes? Occasionally, but not often. It's the, it's the same basic concept. A little bit of butter. Put it, Flip it once. Like, I, I don't, don't know. Use much butter. I'm not a huge butter fan. I don't like to use it too often. I'm not. Like, I don't put it's butter on my probably vegetables. Probably for the best. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna I, disparage you. I don't for, like it. Not like, I know a lot butter. of people that love it, and that's great. It's just it's never. It's okay, but I don't love it. But look again. I'm look. It's probably for the best. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you you should be using more butter, but um, generally considered one of the most important ingredients in a grilled cheese sandwich. A good one, anyway. Yeah. Well, I think olive oil is better. Okay. All right. Before we get to the chicken wings, I wanted to hit you with a travel tip, Gary. You ready for this one? Okay. So, do you ever check bags when you travel? Because I never do, ever. Uh, it's It's been a while. So, I think most people are kind of on that right now. Although, they'll make you gate check your bag because, like, no one checks bags anymore. Yeah. Then there's no room to put it up there. So, what I was thinking was, like, it costs money uh, most of the time to check your bag. Like, 50 bucks or 75 bucks or whatever the hell it is now. It's something outrageous. But people... Like, they feel like they need to bring a lot of things with them on a trip. Tim, I would assume that you would be one of those people. I don't check bags. You don't? I, I thought that you would need to have, like, everything, like, oh, I couldn't I don't go want out wearing... A, I, don't want, I'm, I don't want my my stuff being handled by all kinds of different people and thrown here and thrown there, and you never know what's happening to it. And you then you're at the mercy of when it ever comes out of the baggage corrals when you get your bag and you get to go. See, I'm no, not... no, I'd rather have my bag with myself. Surprisingly, they don't make him check his bag in his own car when he's about to go on his three-hour vacation drive. <laughs> That's true, Gary. That's well, true. I have a little valise that if I'm flying, I, I can put everything in there and it fits perfectly inside an overhead compartment. Yeah, what people don't seem to do, like you can do to, to finagle a few different things. Like, you know, you, you bring so many socks with you, you bring so much underwear with you. I mean, that stuff actually isn't super pricey. You can go on Amazon and get like, 20 pairs of underwear and 20 pairs of socks for very little money. So you can kind of bring that with you. And if you ever want to bring anything back, you can just dispose of the underwear and socks that you brought mm -hmm. on the trip. That's one way you can alleviate space. Or most hotels have like laundry service. So instead of like mm -hmm. paying the 75 bucks to up to check your bag, just bring less stuff. And then you can like do laundry for like 30 bucks halfway through the trip. And then everything is clean again. And you have a ton of room. But people just don't seem to do this. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's people a good tend idea. to pack for every some people anyway tend to pack for every possible contingency, uh, and then like you don't wear half the stuff anyway. So at least that's been my experience. Yeah, no, I, I found the same thing. Like uh, w when we went on our honeymoon, we did uh, like all throughout Europe, and we ended up we ended up on like six flights or something like that. My wife was like, "Oh yeah, I need this." I was like, "Do you really need it? Because we could really get slowed down here if we have to check a bag. It's mm -hmm. not so much." People handling it. I don't give a shit about that. I don't even care about waiting like 15 minutes for my bag. If my bag is last to come out, I don't care about that either. I care about it showing up. That is the real yeah. critical yeah, part of it. too. Because when you're spending two days in one place and two days in one place, if your bag doesn't show up to the first place, well, you're fucked. Yeah, absolutely. So I agree. You want to reduce the points of contact between you and disaster. Yes, if I can just have traveling. it with me. 
You know, I'll skimp on stuff. That's okay. You know, I'll pack a, you know, I'll pack a pair of running shoes with me or an extra pair of shoes and just put all the socks inside the shoes. And you know, there and now I'm not taking up as much See, space anymore. That's 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 thinking right there. There we go. Yeah, just, tr- 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 I, know, just I see people like freaking out on planes about it, and it just it, it's strange to me why people have people like freaking out on planes though. Well, because traveling is not fun. I'll like try, being somewhere different. Is, being somewhere different is good, but the actual process of physically traveling by and large is miserable uh, and people don't like it because you are completely out, you know so much control is out of your hands you're completely at the mercy of so many factors that aren't yours you're in a confined space or you're around a bunch of other people who are also you know not in a great mood uh so being somewhere different that's great but the actual physical process of traveling by and large unless you're traveling like first class and if you are great other than that, like it's not that pleasant. It's actually quite unpleasant. It's quite stressful. See, I it don't... hasn't been that bad for yeah. me in my experience. Me like, I would say, you know, you get you get there a reasonable time. I mean, maybe getting up early sucks, but whatever. You're you're. I'll admit, coming home sometimes is a little rough, but going there, like, you know, I'll get there two hours before the flight takes off. I'll sit down at the bar, have a beer or two. Once you get on the plane, like I would say, ninety percent of planes now, you've got essentially like a Netflix's worth of movies and television shows to watch as you're flying. Like I did a 10 hour flight from Italy back to Toronto and I, I just watched like five movies. It was fine. Yeah. I, I mean, I did long haul flights across the Pacific. It was miserable. I just wanted to be, to be over. Cause you wanted to smoke. No, it was just, it was just miserable to be confined in a space for 12 hours like that. It's just, that's no fun. But that's what you wanted. You're getting to a place and being and confining yourself in your room and watching TV anyway. So why wouldn't no, you just I watch can, TV I and be happy on the plane? Walk out when you want. The seats don't, you can't recline back the way you'd like. It's, anyway, and plus you're just, you're also in an environment around a bunch of other people who are also feeling similarly not thrilled. Like wanting to get this part of the trip over with so you can get to the good part sort of thing. See, I, I get, that, look, it's, that, it's that, not perfect. I listen. I, I kind of agree with you, Gary. And on like the way back, like once you're done your trip, you're like, oh, because you have like the the letdown of like, oh, I, I got to go back to reality yeah. now and get back to my day to day life. Like the fun part is over, and the plane, the the go, the ride to the airport, and the plane on the way back is there. But the plane, like wherever you're going, if it's somewhere where you want to go, like that's like part of the fun of it. Yeah, you know, you get you get a nice meal maybe at the airport or something like that. You. You sit down. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I really enjoy the airport. It's, I, it's odd, I guess. I actually I actually try not to spend any money in the airport when I'm there. That's probably the better idea. Sure. Yeah, just I for whatever you like. I don't like to drink before I get on a plane. I even really like drinking on planes. I just find I feel really bloated every time that I drink on planes. And you know, the food, what you're paying at the airport for food is like 10x for like the shittiest thing possible. Oh, sure. It makes no sense. I'll fully admit that, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I again, it's mostly the way there. Um, but I think for me, it's 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 like you said, it's you're kind of already in that vacation mode. I feel like as soon as I get into an Uber or drop off my car at the airport, like parking, like all right, it's I'm, I'm on vacation. It's it starts now. So, but I mean, up the wallet a little bit. Fair enough. Drinks. But I'm also the type of person where I don't know. At least half the time. You know, when I'm going somewhere the day of, I'm like, oh, gee, I wish I just wasn't going anywhere. What? Which was just like having a staycation instead. See, again, I, I think you don't go on proper vacations. I think you should you should pick a place you actually want to go and fly there and have fun. But I could pick them. But still, there's this anxiety about like, you know, I just kind of don't want to do anything. Maybe there's like meds you can take for that. Where you won't feel like I'm not anxious. afraid to fly. No, no, I'm not afraid to fly. Yeah, it's, right. it's, no, it's the it's, depression it's, you're clearly going through. Yeah, it sounds like you're scared to go to the airport to go flying. It's not the actual flying part that scares you. It's actually doing something. I kind of enjoy the daily routine most of the time over like getting out of my routine. I will get out of my routine. I do go on little trips. I do go on vacations. But like there's something to me really enjoyable about just like the day to day life living that makes me happy. Then why ever go anywhere? Oh, because you need to sometimes get away from a situation and, and just recharge and, and relax. Uh, and I do, but like, and I still go. But every now and then you feel like, you know, like if I, 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 I had to go like on a trip to, to Vancouver a few years ago. 
for my brother's wedding. And that was great. But like, I kind of wish like I could have gone to the wedding and then come home right away. Like, cause I just didn't want to like be out of my comfort zone. So you didn't get to enjoy it the entire time? Well, no, I didn't because I got really sick on the plane on the way over. So I actually did not enjoy my time there. Okay, well, I mean, but, that, that, uh, that's a little bit different if you're sick in a place the entire time. I don't know. I'm just, there are some times where you're like, you're excited for a vacation and then you book it. And then as it comes, you're like, oh, man, like staying home is also awesome. I can honestly tell you I have never had that emotion. Okay. What about you, Gary? I don't have it every time. In fact, I would say it's the ponderous of the times I, I don't. But every now and then, like, I just feel like, oh, you know what's cool? Just, like, having a staycation around where you are. Just relaxing and doing whatever you want to do that day. Paul would like to say something. In Tim's defense, he hates nice weather. That's true. Right. So, like, all of right. us are like, oh, we're going to Mexico or we're going somewhere yeah. where it's sunny and warm. And he's like, I ew, the that. sun. I wish, like... I wish it was dark earlier. I would That's dread that. If I like if I knew tomorrow I was going on a trip to Mexico in two weeks, I would be like, oh my goodness. I it's another fourteen days, thirteen days, twelve days. Like, yeah, I want to go, but at the same time, like I really don't want to go. Maybe. It's like this there's a tension there. Okay, strange stuff. Uh your chicken wing rankings. Uh sauce. Oh, yeah. These rankings. are great rankings. What's wrong with you people? Uh people did not take these very well. So here are your chicken wings. We have them up on the screen right now. So yeah, chi- I stand by them. Chicken wing flavors definitively ranked. Mild is number one, Garyan. Then blue cheese, which is not a flavor. It's a condiment. Yes, it is. Honey garlic, soya sauce, lemon pepper. Those are the top five. Then there's a gap to Dijon mustard, <laughs> sweet chili, medium temperature, salt and pepper, which again, don't really feel like flavors. Honey mustard. You know, you have to get your mustards out of the way for your chicken wings, apparently. Garlic parmesan. Then there's a gap. Then there's Jamaican jerk, smoky barbecue, mango habit- habanero, and then in last place, anything super spicy. This is like so the, many questions. This is like the rankings of a serial killer. I stand by every one of them. I'm those sure rankings. you do. So can you at least concede that? Clearly, you're someone who doesn't like spicy food, which is fine. Yeah, I don't like I don't like super spicy stuff. I don't. But no, no, you hold, can't hold, then hold make on. a definitive you, you, list. I was gonna say for it's, everyone, it's not that he doesn't like super spicy food. If mild is his number one rank, you find medium hot, don't you? For like chicken wings, no, sauce. I don't mind medium. If I'm served medium, I will eat it. I will not complain. It'll be enjoy. Like it's on the list. Like I enjoy it fine. It's just I like mild a little better. Like, also, can I say I I will bet almost everything I have <laughs> that you've never had a, le- a lemon pepper wing in your entire life? Actually, not true. There was a place not far from where I went to university that on Thursday nights, which were wing nights, one of their wing flavors was the dry rub lemon pepper, and I loved it. Okay, that's a dry. So rub. I had it quite a bit. It's a chicken wing that a dry rub, rub is very common for a chicken for chicken I, wings. I, Instead of a sauce, yes, I understand it's like that. A coating, but it's just like having salt and pepper on it as well. Like that's not like something. It like comes it's a flavor. In. It's not a sauce. It's a flavor. Okay, like these rankings are horrible. Horrible. Well, they're okay. Just, they're, they're Why just, don't you do better? Okay, number one, hot as possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's also not a conventional take. Most people are not interested in something that's five hundred million on the Schofield scale. Well, like your average hot wing is not even hot. Exactly. What so you ask. I, I think they 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 kind of make it so in conventional well, you say terms. That, but not long ago, like a month or so ago, I went through the drive-through at the Popeyes, and I wanted to try their wings. And I ordered a, a I ordered a six pack of their garlic parmesan wings, and I had to be warned in the checkout that these are not like plain wings with that sauce on it. They're actually the ghost pepper wings that have this sauce on it to make sure I was okay with that fact. So clearly, some people, enough people, are bothered by that level of spice that that disclaimer was required. Okay, Pussies? but ghost pepper is different than hot. I mean, it's a type of hot. It's a wide spectrum, I would say. I, I okay, I don't disagree with that. But like pass it as hot as possible. Well, clearly that's not that popular of a take because there's lots of people who don't want that kind of spice. 
I disagree. I would say there are entire franchises and restaurants more so than ever built on the principle of people getting as hot hot wings as possible. Some I mean, people like that, but a lot of people don't. Mem- I mean, Memphis, like, I-, I don't know. I just feel like that particular type of chicken is is absolutely going crazy. Like hot chicken sandwiches are the thing that every restaurant tries to go after now. The most popular talk show in the world is a guy who makes celebrities eat progressively hot chicken wings. Like, I don't know. I it's think funny it's, to it's watch pretty people popular. Struggle. It's because it's funny to watch people struggle with that type of heat. Right. That's right. The, but when the, we say the, hot the wings, we don't necessarily mean the hottest wings on the planet. Well, he just said as hot as possible. Because the restaurant won't make them that hot. Well, Most some restaurants places, won't. Some places make them so hot you have to sign a waiver. That is true. And I did those and they were too hot. I could only finish one, and then I was, like, scrubbing out my mouth. So, yes, I guess as hot as possible, but most places do not serve that kind of thing. Like, the suicide wings are about as hot as you're going to find at most, like, standard fair places, yeah. and, like, those are barely hot. Hey, well, I don't want that type of spice. That's because you're a pussy. No, I want flavors that I can actually enjoy. enjoy. Like See, my, spice like, is a like scent. mild. When you say flavor, your first option is mild. That's <laughs> because, not even, that's that's just hot with the hot taken out. So like, the flavor's gone. Spiciness is not a flavor; it's a sensation. Well, what's the flavor of mild, Tim? You get to actually fl- taste the actual. Describe just no, no, no. Describe the flavor of mild to me. That's hard to describe. There's a tanginess it is. to it. So tang- there's a tanginess. So tangy. There's a sweetness and a tanginess to it that I really enjoy. So tangy and sweet is where you're going with this. Now, imagine if it was super spicy as well. It really opens up those taste buds. Oh, my God. I don't want it super now, spicy. That's because you're a coward. But what you should really do is what our friend Will did when he hosted us in Napa uh, for a wine tasting. And like, you know, Because wine tasting, if you're not like good at it, which I'm not, he was trying to explain to us, like, how do you describe what you're drinking? Like, what do you smell? And he was basically like, Try to do your description without saying the word wine and then try to figure it out. We're just sitting there like, oh, yeah, we could probably try to do that. I couldn't. You know, other people are much better at that than I am. But that was his like Cole's note version of how you should try to describe your wine. I think it probably goes the same thing for taste as well. Sure. The tangy seems odd for a mile. Yeah, that, that, that's that's the way it, it strikes me. I mean, I, I like a hot and honey. I, don't get me wrong. I, I do like the sort of tanginess and sweetness. And I don't mind from some spice. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't mind some spice. It's I don't know. It seems pretty directed that your final two ones are like Jamaican the ones that jerk, I find overly spicy. Hab- habanero mango and then anything super spicy. Like, you, you don't have a single Scoville in the first, like, ten things you've listed. I like things that don't have a lot of spice. A little spice. A little spice is fine. Like when you sure, say, but when with you something say, this... on, when, when you say spice, are you talking about like salt? No, like, like that's your level. level of, like, see, describe salt and pepper wings to me. They're just salty and peppery, Gary. <laughs> that's kind of what it is. You like to taste the black pepper, black pepper, crispy. Uh, oh, so you would get a pack. Like if you're preparing these yourself, you would get a package of wings from the store. You would salt them, pepper them. And then grill them. Like, That's all you would do. Have you never, for example, just bought wings from the hot counter that are plain and just fired salt and pepper on them eating them? Because I have. You'd fire no. salt and pepper on them? What? Yeah, if you don't want your hands to get all messy and you don't want a sauce all over it, then just put that on there. No. That's a lunatic. Okay, behavior. well, I have done that. Well, no if shit. you want to eat wings and you don't want your hands to get all saucy, get boneless wings and eat them with a fork. Yeah. That get, way you can still enjoy the sauces. That way you can just eat nuggets. Yeah, well, those are just chicken nuggets. I, I, I will not. Whatever you want to call them, they keep your fingers clean, and you can still enjoy sauce. And I, but I also like the sauce on the side. But I just, I don't know. I just like dry rubs style wings too. Like I just, I, I enjoy those. Like I like a mixture. I, I, I'm behind you. I, there's, there's validity in the dry rubs. I just feel like salt and pepper might be a little, a little I, basic. So it is, it is basic. I so, agree. Listen, I, I'm not against dry rub, but I don't want dry rub on my deep fried chicken wings that I get at a pub on wing night. I would prefer, yes. like, if I was going to get dry rub, I want those to be cooked, like, in someone's smoker or on a barbecue. Like, real, yeah, like, yeah, like, real chicken wings. That, mm-hmm. Not the seagulls, not the, key, not the seagulls they killed out back that are, like, this big that they're throwing in a fucking deep fryer. 
that is not what is going on. That's pretty much what goes on. Pigeons, maybe. That is not. What's, no, that, again, that's not what's going on. I mean, on. how do you know? Who here has worked in a kitchen, raised their hand? Because it would be against the law to oh, do that. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever broken the law, Tim. That would never happen. Yeah, okay. Well, if you wish to believe that, that that's what, that's what oh, I'm just, pubs I'm, are doing on their I, wing night. I, I am telling you. I mean, the, the wings that you get at wing night, I mean, yes, they are chicken, but they're like the lowest quality of chicken wing. They're the cheapest one money can buy. That's why usually. they- Usually. What do you mean usually? Tell me the ones where they aren't. There's a, there's a place here in the city that does a wing night where the wings are huge. And they're quite delicious. Name the, name the place. Uh, it's a place that used to be not that great, but has been rebuilt and it's name, fantastic. Name the place. Well, you know where it is. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the fuck, I'm asking you to fucking tell me. It, it starts with the word lion. I'm not going to say the whole plane. I just don't like doing that. But anyway, there's, there's a place here in the Lion, city. Lion you want to blow up the, your spot? The, the lion's head? Their and wings are fucking terrible. There, I was there not long ago on a Tuesday night for their wing night. Knockout. Yeah, and the people have, I was with but you have all bad ordered judgment. mild, by the way. But are, like, are they like you and they think that like dry rub no. salt and pepper are the way to go? I don't know. We all ordered mild. So, so yes is the answer to the question, Paul. It was delicious. You were you were going to say soya sauce, <laughs> like what? Oh, shanty? Yeah. That, what, that, what, that's what, a that, what shanty? Walk. What shanty? Manchu sold you this walk. Thing? That's a Manchu walk specific chicken it's wing. Just a dip, They're, like a deep fried chicken wing, and then you just put soya sauce on it. Yeah, and it's funny. There, are, not every Manchu walk, from what I can tell, does the chicken wings anymore. But why but would you go to Manchu walk and order chicken wings? Because you're there to get your two or three item combo, and the chicken wings look good, so you get them. I mean, because they one... have a different type of coating on them. They're almost like a chicken ball coating, rather than like the normal breaded style ones you'd get at a pub. They're actually quite delicious. Garion, if there's one thing you need to understand is that not only having a chicken wing that's been left out under a heat lamp for eight hours is delicious. What makes it more delicious is dipping it in soya sauce. So you're not dipping it in this case because it absorbs it. You actually open the packet and you pour it on the chicken wing. Oh my God, that sounds so salty. You got to go at the right time in a place like that. So they're not sitting under the heat lamps. If you go at like rush hour, you're going to get. Are you like scouting out Manchu walks in like a white unmarked van? No, you just know what time of day they're turning over product more frequently than they're not. Yeah, but but, but you say that, but you come on here and you talk and it sounds like you don't know anything. So I don't trust you that you know when they're turning over food. You, you, well, it's, it's just common sense. Obviously, it's you have no and, common sense. How do well, you, you forget? You forget he's talking to the employees and asking them questions about what time is the business I, I, of the I day? Feel like what time do we things, change over the fryers? Yeah, feel like of all the things I can cite a lot of expertise in, food court mall. Yeah, yeah. No, is no, one of the I, things I feel I, like I, I hold dis- a channel to very uh, few people. Agree. It is just like when people see a really big fat person and they say, "Wow, he must know really good food." No, the opposite is the case. That guy likes everything. He's just shoving shit in his mouth all the time. You want someone who actually has a palate, who likes different things. They can tell you where the good places to eat are. You just show up at the food court and get what you want. There's no insight to it. It's just, I feel hungry. I'm going to go to the food court. You're not picking a time. Don't lie to us. Well, when, if I'm going to order something like Chinese food, I would never get it at like three o'clock in the afternoon at Manchu Walk. feel like that's got to be a dead zone, right? Why? Because it's not a very common time for people to eat a meal. So, so, so just to be clear, your fear in this scenario is that they would have made food at like one o'clock, and, and it's at three o'clock. In, you're in, getting, in the, you're getting the food that hasn't been eaten in the yeah. Lunch that room. that would be my concern that it's okay. been out there in the tray for like two hours, and at that point, like maybe I'll, I'll I'll go get something that's made right there in front of me, fresh. Well, there there are places where you can go and you sit at a table <laughs> and you have a menu, and and they'll you pick something and they'll make it right then and there. And look, sometimes that's great, but other times if you're on the go, like you're not looking for that. When you're as busy, when are you on the go and you're going to a mall? I'm I'm at the mall all the time. My yeah, but like, when is it like? Oh, I got I got to run. I'm gonna grab some Manchu no, walk at the mall. I'm, I'm I'm hungry now. I'm at the mall and I'm hungry. So it has nothing to do with you're on the go or doing anything. It's just, I'm, it's exactly what I just said. I'm hungry now. I'm on the Give go. Me. I was at the mall the other day and I decided I was hungry. Sure. You could go <laughs> any, you're at the mall. You're not actually doing anything. You could go wherever you wanted. Okay. But I'm at the mall doing something. And while I'm doing something at the mall, I decide, oh, while I'm here, 
you know, there's all these great choices. Would you I get? Have one. What'd, What'd you, you get? get? Doesn't matter. What'd you get? I got a hot dog from New York Fries. <laughs> <laughs> great, great selection, Tom. Got you're a real expert, bud. I'm not. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> was that the night that you ran to my wife at the mall? Yes. <laughs> she she came back and told me, she said, I saw Tim at the mall. I've never seen anyone look happier in my life. So kudos to you. You had a big... Oh, I was sp- in a great mood. Yeah, she, said you, looked, she said you looked absolutely jaunty. Yes, I was in a great mood. I had to go get some coffee. I was... Yeah, I was in a really good mood. And then she, and she, I, she yeah. did tell me that she told you that she got the last of whatever the secret Nespresso was. And that, that probably like hurt your feelings. No, because I wasn't going to purchase as many sleeves as it would have required to get that. Even though it did sound like a pretty cool offer, uh, I, I wasn't going to get that many sleeves. So it was okay. Wait, what else did you get at the mall besides your hot dog and coffee? Well, I bought the coffees. And then I walked. And I just sort of, when I got there, I sort of did my rounds. What does that entail? Can you describe like, that? Like, you like a doctor? Like I'll go to the Apple store and look at the stuff in there <laughs> and see what like if what's what's cool or whatever. So I walk around the Apple store and I will usually look around like, I don't know. Uh, I look through uh, Stokes or Think Kitchen. I like to see what like stuff's on sale or if there's anything neat there. I, so I walk through that store. I go through the uh, the sport sporting goods store. And uh, through lids, I like to walk through there and see if there's any new stuff. Uh, that that interests me. And then, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I needed to do that day. No, see, not especially. So I'm, I'm curious about something though, Tim, because I, as something we talked about earlier this episode, um, you know, possible interactions with with um, service representatives, like. Don't don't you fear that by walking into these stores and perusing that you may encounter someone and then be forced to buy something? Well, not forced, but like if I go there looking for something, like the difference to me between whether I'm browsing just for the sake of browsing, which I was for the most part the other night, or whether I'm actually going to on the I'm on the hunt for something. Like, am I going in there with the intent of making a, a purchase, or am I in, going there in, with the intent to look? And if I see the right thing. Then I'll purchase it. So it would yeah, but the person who's going to ask, "Can I help you with that?" Doesn't know what. That's state not of the, mind that's in. not the same thing as somebody like helping you find a certain thing on the shelf, right? Like if I'm looking for stemless wine glasses, let's say, and I go to the store and I say, "Do you guys have those?" And I'm escorted over to the section where they have them, and like they take them off the shelf for me. Okay. Then I'm far more likely to make that purchase there and then than if I just said, "No, I'm just looking." But if I need any help, I'll let you know, sir. But I sound- thought this was as simple as like uh, anybody asking you if they could help you. You no, suddenly locked no, in. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Additionally, in your scenario, you went to the store to buy a thing. Yeah, but I don't have to buy it there. I could buy it. There's any number of places I could buy it. Yeah, but you just kind of told us that you don't like to shop around, so you would buy it there every time. Not necessarily. What was the, la- what was the to- last time you did any sort of price comparison where you didn't buy a thing that you wanted at the first place you saw it? When I outfitted my apartment. Okay, so you really went around, you made the rounds, did you? On a few things, I did. Okay, so that's interesting though. So for every, like for the furniture you're talking about? Yes, like the couch and the chair, stuff like that. Okay, you had to go test it out? Well, because I didn't know exactly what I, what I wanted. And then when I saw something I wanted, I was like, well, I like that. But like, I might like other furniture as well. And they're all relatively close by, so I should take a look out elsewhere. You know, it's a pretty major purchase that I'm, 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 I'm making here. It's not, you know, a hamburger. Mm-hmm. Gary, and did you have any topic uh, quickly before we finish this up? I, I, I did want to ask him a quick question uh, because, you know, we started this episode off by giving him credit. I'd like to give him a little bit more credit. I, I don't Yay. know. I don't know how how uh, specifically you were involved in the Oscars being moved up an hour in terms of their broadcast schedule. But I know. You have long been yes. to start things earlier. Um, so I'm just curious. Do you think that the the world is is starting to get on your side for this? And is there a specific thing now that the Oscars are starting earlier? Is, is there the next target for something that starts earlier? Yes. I'm glad you asked that question. Yes is the answer to that question. Um, I was ecstatic. I, I, so I didn't – Sunday night I had no idea – 
what time the Academy Awards started. I just didn't know what time I, I needed to tune in. I assumed it would be like eight o'clock Eastern at, at the earliest. So I'm just scrolling through the dial and I noticed, oh my goodness, it starts at seven Eastern. And I was just thrilled beyond thrilled because yeah, I mean, everything starts way too late. People need, particularly on work nights or school nights, people need to get to bed. People can't be up all hours watching these things. So that was great that it started early. No one complained about it, by the way. Everyone seemed to be very happy about that fact. And yes, I am of the opinion that major sporting events need to start earlier. I want to see World Series games in the light. I do not want to have to watch every single World Series game in the darkness. I'd like to see the Super Bowl start earlier because I'd like to see the Super Bowl uh, you know, in the light, particularly when it's out west. I want to see the whole thing in sunlight if it's out west. Um, I, I want a lot of things to start earlier. Those are the two things right off the top of my head I want to see start earlier. Um, a, oh, I know that the NCAA men's basketball championship game doesn't tip off to like 9.30 Eastern or something. Yeah. That's a crime. That's crazy. That needs to, I mean, there's nothing else on that night. The NBA takes the night off so that you can watch the basketball game. How about we tip at 8 o'clock Eastern? Would that be the worst thing in the world? Can we do that? There's little stuff like that. That uh, like some major sporting events. If there's no good reason to start them super late, then let's not start them super late, okay? Can I'm... I fight you on one of those? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I just because I I know you're a purist at heart, and I I know sentimentality and tradition are are big parts of of what you love. I like baseball playoff games in the dark. I I, I can't take a ba- baseball playoff game seriously if the sun is out. Baseball playoffs to me are are Joe Buck telling you that the clock switched over to midnight. Welcome to okay, the next but day. Like, yeah, but I don't like the, I, I, the World Series. Like. I, I don't really care about baseball anymore, so it doesn't it's irrelevant Fair. that when it comes on. But I never liked how some of these games, especially you know, like when the Yankees were a part of their dynasty and they were playing outdoor games at the end of October at, in the middle of the night. Like I feel like it takes away from the quality of baseball when it's super cold out. Where if you just Definitely. played the game six hours earlier, yeah. you might get a better game out of it. On a Saturday or a Sunday, there is no reason to play a, a World Series game at night. Now, during the week, I totally get it. There's a perfectly good reason for that. But a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday afternoon World Series game, I think, would be far more enjoyable and would also be more accessible to more fans. So so when would you start the Super Bowl? Five. I would start the Super Bowl five at Eastern. 5 Eastern. 5, five Eastern is a good time. Yeah. I think everyone would be on board with that. Yeah. I, that's what I – and it's like I would start the Sunday night football games an hour earlier and move everything back 30 minutes. So, like, make, make, you know, make it work so that – the, the everything ends a little earlier than it does. Well, we've, no we've talked be about, this about this before. And actually I've, I've, I've since actually gotten to experience this because I was in Denver for week three of the NFL season this so, year. So great. The mountain yeah. time zone is the ideal. Football it is. Time. It, it is. It's, it's the best. I love it. So, so much. It's the one thing about, about Alberta that I, you know, I, I think I miss the most is the, the time zone. It's the, the Pacific time zone is, is good, but it's not as good as the mountain one. Mountain one is the perfect time zone for those of us who enjoy sports. Uh, it, it's amazing. Everything that can start earlier should start earlier. Um, like I think that's just a general proposition. I think that that would be fine. Yeah, and especially it's even worse for us. Like It's bad for you, Gary, and you see a lot of people like East Coast dads when they're trying to stay up for Sunday night football, Tim and I live in, and Paul live in the worst time zone in North America. Awful. So when the Oscars started at eight o'clock, our time, I'm like, this is a Royal treat. I'm excited. It also meant to me, Oh God, this is going to be a four hour up. This is going to be a four hour ceremony because they're going to start at, uh, at eight o'clock. Can I just say that by and large, I thought this year's Oscars was great. I, I watched um, it. I, I taped it, and I watched it the next day. Uh, so I got through the commercials. They they got rid of. It's funny you say that though, because they got rid of all the things that I would expect you to really like. Like here's a montage for musicals from the '30s. It's like no, we just got rid of that shit, and all of a sudden you can get the show in. It's not that big of a deal. I would rather save that stuff for like the important anniversary episodes. So like when they do the hundredth Academy Awards sure. in a couple of years, that's the time for that. You don't need to do that every time, right? Then it sort of becomes played. Um, I did not care for the dancing during the in memoriam felt like that sort of struck a wrong note. The singing was great, but the dancing around and then you couldn't always see on TV or on the screen who was even being remembered in the in memoriam. That was a complete miss. And uh, I was delighted that they only used the five people, five nominee thing for the big awards because that could have made it a 12 hour ceremony. 
But by and large, like they kept the monologue relatively compact and, and uh, they kept the show moving and uh, the, the musical numbers were great and I thought really well done. And like for an, a television show, which has, you know, just seen its ratings nosedive over the last 15 years, this is precisely the sort of, I wouldn't call it a workmanlike Academy Awards, but something close to that to like get people back. And, you know, and also when you're honoring popular film, you know, movies that more than dozens of people have seen, uh, that helps too. So for a lot of reasons, I thought this year Academy Awards was great. Yeah, and Kimmel hosting it for the fourth time, I think was a really a big advantage because he just didn't, I think he's just over hosting it. So he did his like 10 minutes off the top. And he didn't really see him again the entire time. He didn't feel the yeah, need I agree. to do bits and interject all the time. He's like, here's the next person and then left it to them. I agree. It, seem, I mean, it seems I'm like they're grooming player. Mulaney, right? I mean, if, if 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 Mulaney can bring the fire that he brought in his one minute over the course of fifteen minutes, I am all in. But he he. I don't think he, the Academy wants that. Though. Oh, I don't. He, know. he did the like technical awards dinner. He's done like the Independent Film Spirit Awards. Yeah, him and, like, I, him and I, I think they're did, him and Kroll did the uh, Independent Spirit Awards for like five years or something like that, and it was always a blast. I think I think he's there if, if Kimmel says no. Look, I'm not a huge fan of Jimmy Kimmel, but what I am a fan of is having somebody who is a regular host of the Oscars. The Oscars are always best when Bob Hope does 12 or Billy Crystal does 10 or whatever, right? There is a value in having a veteran up there who knows how to host the Oscars. Uh, it's a different type of hosting event. So as long as he continues to do a good job, like they should keep giving him the opportunity until he says no. And if he says no, well, then you can go to somebody like you said, John Mulaney, that'd be fine. Yeah, I would like to see John Mulaney, but that will do it. On the Pat Mayo Experience, code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy. Com. We'll get you a deposit match of up to 100 bucks. If you want to support the show, go do that right now. We have fun tournaments up there, Pat Mayo branded tournaments. Uh, and you know, we're going to do some on-location shoots all across the all across North America uh, because of underdogs. So the more we can support them, the more cuss corners, maybe some live cuss corners. If we come to your town, you can come out and heckle Tim in person if you really wanted to. Ask Tim a question. You can come up with it, all right? So yeah, underdogfantasy.com. Use code Mayo. Smash likes up to the channel where you're here. I want to thank Gary. I also want to thank Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That is not my name. For being on the line today. Sub to the channel, rate and review the audio podcast, and sub to the Cuss Corner exclusive feed on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcast. I'm Pat Mayo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.